Hey everyone, as you know, I went away for the holidays. What does that mean? I did some book shopping. I cannot wait to tell you about all of the books that I pick up. So let's get started and get ready because this is quite a list. Welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? I hope you guys are doing really, really well. I hope that your new year has started with a bang as far as it is reading is concerned. Um, I am in a little bit of a slump, to be honest with you. Reading has been a little bit difficult for me to focus on with everything that has gone on lately, but I have a feeling I'm about to turn the corner. But I have so many great books that I picked up while I was in Oregon, so I cannot wait to tell you about them. Um, of course, I went to Powell's Bookstore while I was in Oregon. It, it is such an amazing bookstore in Portland. Um, actually, Portland is about two hours north of where my parents live, so my brother Francisco and I got in a car and made a brother's day trip out of it. Um, we went, we did shopping, we had some lunch, and then we came home. It was really great. He's a really great guy. Um, and then there is another uh, independent used bookstore, mostly used. It does have some new in Eugene, where my parents live, called Smith Family Bookstore, which I definitely 100% support every time I go there. And then in addition, in addition, um, there is a pretty big Barnes and Noble where my nephews and nieces and I like to go. And we do a lot of our uh, shopping there um, when I'm doing sort of Christmas shopping. I can bring them, they can browse, I can browse. So I got a couple books there as well. So quite a list quite a list. So get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your Goodreads. However, you keep track of your TBR. Please get ready because so many books are going to add to it. I promise. As always, if you can order these books from your local independent bookstore, I do ask that you do so. Or if you are a library user, get your library to get you a copy as soon as possible because I'm telling you, you're going to want to read all of these. Now, we're going to go ahead and start with a book that I have actually been on the hunt for for quite some time. And that is the the Street by Anne Perry. Now, I'm sorry, I keep saying Perry, and when I was looking for the book, I was always looking for Perry, but it is actually Anne Petrie. Petri. Um, and there is actually a new edition of this book that is out where uh, Tiari Jones does the introduction of it. And I have seen this listed on a number of best of lists as far as literature, literature by African American women, books that people should read that they haven't read. So I have been hunting for it for ages. And thank goodness they are putting out a new edition and I will be getting it. But they did have a couple of copies at Smith family bookstore in Eugene. And I asked my niece, uh, um, Acacia, which one I should get. And she actually really, really loved this cover. So I wound up picking this one up. But I really should have looked at it a little bit more because to be honest with you, the print is so small, I have no idea if I can actually read this book. Um, yeah, in my old age, I am having a hard time with print that is the size of the an ant just to be honest. Um, the Street is the story of a woman and her young son who live in Harlem. I do not know much more about it than that. I do love that the back of it says, The Street, a block of dirty rundown tenements. The Street, a dead-end junkyard of broken dreams. The Street, a marketplace of violence and vice. The Street, a tender, terrible story of a young black woman trapped in the ghetto nightmare of Harlem. The Street is a work of close documentation and intimate perception, a gripping tale, overflowing with a classic pity and terror of good imaginative writing, strong and angry. So I am totally excited about this. It is probably going to require a magnifying glass, but that is The Street by Anne Petrie. Have any of you guys read this book? What do you guys think about it? Talk to me, talk to me, talk to me, because I have been so excited to read this one. Okay. Next is a book that I picked up at Powell's Bookstore, and I don't even know how I wound up noticing it, but I am so glad. And that's Lo um, The Lost Girls of Camp Forevermore by Kim 
Fu. I want to start just by saying Kim Fu has style that I would rock. I would, I just love her style so, so much. And she lives in the Pacific Northwest in Seattle. This is the story of five young girls that go on a camping, kayaking trip on an island in the Pacific Northwest. Something happens and it's about how that event affects them throughout their lives. We get sort of the days at the camping trip, at the event, the kayaking, all of that. But we also get to see these young women grow up and how the effects of this event occurred, no, affected them and who they wind up being. So, and this is blurbed, I want to say, by Celeste Ng. Yes, Celeste Ng, and I want to say Lisa Ko. Lisa Ko. So two authors that I absolutely love. So that just rings even more true for me. So that's The Lost Girls of Camp Forevermore by Kim Fu. The next book that I wound up picking up is a classic. I believe it was originally published in 1826. I had never heard of it, but I just fell in love with this sort of simplistically beautiful cover, and I had to get my hands on it. And that is Lady Audley's Secret by Mary Elizabeth Braden. And I'm going to hold that up for And this is a new Blooms, is it New World Edition? the modern library edition of this book. Look at how absolutely beautiful that is. This is, again, this is a book that came out in the 1800s. It was a huge, huge success. This is a story of a young man who meets the new wife of his uncle, I believe. I want to say it's his uncle. Yes, his uncle. And everyone is infatuated with her, including his good friend, George. One day, George goes missing. And he, Robert, starts to feel like maybe his aunt is not the person he thought she was. And maybe she has involvement in his friend George's disappearance. For me, when I, I, so I briefly sort of started reading this one while I was on vacation. Huge, huge feelings that if you liked Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier, this book may be right up your alley. It has sort of a gothic Victorian slash a mystery feel to it, if that is even a thing. So that is Lady Audley's Secret by Mary Elizabeth Braden, and it is beautiful. I'm in love with it. I cannot wait to read it. Cannot wait to read it. So I should tell you guys a little bit of a story. Um, when we were in Oregon, as I told you guys in a past video, we were staying in my niece's bedroom, a three-year-old little girl's bedroom, and there was not a ton of space um, considering we were there so long. And so I had my bag of books, right next to the bed and I spilt an entire glass of water on them. So some of them are a little bit water worn for lack of a better term. Um, the next one that I wound up picking up is another book that I had never heard of and that is The Orphan Salt, I'm sorry, The Orphan of Salt Winds by Elizabeth Brooks. And this is out for Tin House and it is um, blurbed by Ewan Ivey who wrote The Snow Child that I absolutely loved. So this is set on the salt marches marshes in England. It sort of revolves, it starts about uh, the story of the 1930s. A young girl sees a plane crash in the marshes and something happens and she makes a decision that has re repercussions. Um, and then we're in sort of modern times, 75 years later, she is a woman in her 80s and she's always known that her life will come to an end on the salt marshes there. So this is her reminiscing about this event and how it the decision she made as a child, how it affected her as an adult. And as she is sitting on the marches, she gets a sign, a sign that she knew was coming, but now she's sort of foreboding it. She doesn't like the sign and what it means. So all of that, I absolutely think sounds fantastic. So that is The Orphan of Salt Winds by Elizabeth Brook. It's a beautiful cover too, right? Okay, I've been talking so much. This video is going to be so long. A book that probably needs absolutely no introduction, but I absolutely fell in love with this cover in this edition, and it also got the worst of the water damage, and that is Europia, uh, Euphoria. Europia, what was that? Europa, you're on my mind. You know I love you guys. Euphoria by Lily King. Now, I have Lily King's newest novel, which comes out this year, sitting on my shelf ready to read. This was her last novel, and it was a huge, huge success. I love this cover so much. Um, it's the story of a young man who is an anthropologist. He is really at a point in his life, he's even considering taking his life when he meets a couple who are also, also anthropologists, and he sort of becomes enamored with them, and they sort of change the direction of 
where he thinks his life is going. And they go into um, a part, an undiscovered part of the world and become involved with a um, civilization that is dominated as a matriarchy instead of a patriarchy. And it says here that bit, when he leads them to this artistic female-dominated tribe, he ignites an intellectual and emotional firestorm between the three of them that burns out of anyone's control. So this is a book I think everyone should read. Eu Euphoria is absolutely a treasure. I'm so excited for Lily King's new novel, and I actually need to reread this because it has been way too long. So there you go. Next, I went into a little bit of science fiction fantasy with the si um, Sisters of Shadow and Light, by Sarah Larson. This is the story of two sisters that live in a castle in a land where they have these paladins which sort of like are uh, warriors for the society and they have been disappearing. Their father was one of the last ones to disappear and overnight sort of this bramble grows up around and traps them within their um, their castle. And these young sisters are both endowed with different sets of powers. It says Anara inherited their father's paladin powers. Her eyes glow blue and she is able to make plants grow at unbelievable rates. But she has been trapped in her own mind because of the roar that drowns everything else out, leaving her sister Zuhara virtually alone with their emotionally broken human mother. For 15 years they live trapped in the citadel with little contrast from, uh, contact from the outside until the day a stranger passes through the hedge and everything changes. I just think that sounded really, really fun. So I picked it up. Sisters of Shadow and Light by Sarah B. Larson. Okay, next is a book that I've been meaning to pick up forever. One, we have to absolutely adore this cover. And I um, have the author, well, one of the authors, um, has been on my bucket list for so long. And that is The Deep by Rivers Solomon. And now this one says, with David Diggs, William Houston, and Jonathan Snipes. I don't know William Houston and Jonathan Snipes, but David Diggs was La Lafayette slash Thomas Jefferson in Hamilton the Musical. And Rivers Solomon, they wrote a book that was out, The Ghost of oh, What Was Rivers Book. Please tell me I'm gonna be able to get this pretty easy. I apologize, you guys, I'm totally blanking. Uh, the um, An Unkindness of Ghosts, which I've had on my shelf and have been dying to read. This is the story of a mer people that are born from the that are born from pregnant slave women that were thrown into the sea. And they are born and they have created the society under the water. But they have only one person, a historian, that remembers their past and where they came from. And that burden is becoming too hard for the historian. And um, she decides to leave the community and go up and see the history that she knows exists for her people. Now, River Solomon, um, well, I want to say congratulations to them because I believe they just had a baby. Um, so congratulations, Rivers, and uh, your family. And um, I have had this on my list forever to pick up, and I think the cover is beautiful, and I think it sounds really, really good. So that is The Deep by Rivers Solomon with Divi Diggs, William Houston, and Jonathan Snipes. Yeah. Totally digged in. Okay, only five more books to go, guys. I, d I did a little bit of shopping. Not too bad for me. It could have gone a lot worse. Um, and this is The Ghost Clause by Howard Norman. I had never heard this book, but if you see a book full of bookcases and a cat, I'm going to pick it up. And I really like the premise of this book. So this is the story of an older couple where the, the man in the relationship passes away, but he comes back to his home where he has lived for ages um, as a ghost. And they have just, his wife has just sold the house to a young couple who has moved in, sort of starting their life together. And it says here that, um, he spends his time, the ghost spends his time playing his marriage in his own mind as if point as if in a poignant reel to reel while also engaging occasionally intimate observations of the new homeowners. But soon the crisis of a missing child, a local 11 year old threatens the tedious domestic equilibrium as the weight of that case falls on Zachary, the new husband who is newly in his marriage, but is also a rookie private detective. 
Uh, and what this is a heart-rending affirming portrait of two memories, one in the afterlife and one new and erotically charged. So I thought that sounded really, really good. And it is blurred by Juna, uh, Jhumpa Lahiri. I'm having quite a day with names today. Uh, Cheng Ra Lee, who I love, and also Alice McDermott. So all three of those powerhouses, I picked it up. And that is The Ghost, Ho the Ghost Clause by Howard Norman. So yeah, I'm super excited about this one. This is a uh, why no, this is just a straight up fantasy book that has been making the rounds for a bit that um, I should have picked up the other copy that I got. I'm perfectly happy with this copy, but I saw a copy where all the sides were black and that seems much, much more uh, fitting. So this is Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. I don't want to know about a lot about this. I do know that it has uber queer representation. I know it is about a person who works um, as a, uh, necromancer. And I know that it is an adventure story beyond all belief. I kind of want to go into it completely blind. I happen to know that the second one I think just came out as well. So I think two of the three are out so you can get your hands on them. Um, I've heard nothing but rave reviews for Gideon the Ninth by Taz, Taz, Tamzin Muir. Oh, goodness, guys. It is a Wednesday. You would not believe my brain is just not working. But get this book and add it to your TBR, please. Just for me. And for um, Tasman, because I keep mispronouncing uh, her first name so, so, so much. So much. And I think this may be her debut novel. It is her debut novel. So, and it has done very, very well. So congratulations to her. Next is a book I picked up because a lot of people were recommending it to me, and that's The Binding by Bridget Collins. And let's just take a moment for beautiful cover, beautiful cover um, adoration there, because that is just gorgeous. This is the story of a young man. He works on a farm when he gets a letter that calls him into the bookbinding business. Now, in this world, bookbinding and books themselves are forbidden and um, have a lot of sort of superstition into them. There's a lot of magical history behind it. And what happens is he is sort of being integrated into this great historic art form of bookbinding. But not everybody uses the power of binding books for good, and he soon finds a book that has his name on it. And of course, you guys, what does that mean? The adventure begins, right? Um, I have heard a couple of really strong reviews for this. I'm super excited. That cover is beautiful. And so that's The Binding by Bridget Collins. Let's take a moment. Just to, This whole book is gorgeous, just gorgeous. Now, I had a comment in one of my videos, and I can't remember who said it, so I apologize, but they asked me to review a Lisa Jewell book. Now, I had never read Lisa Jewell. To be honest, I'd only seen her in passing. I don't know a ton about her, but I thought, hey, someone was asking me to take a look at her books, and I picked one up at Barnes & Noble, and that is Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell. And um, yeah, totally 100% bought into this book and the idea uh, behind it. So on her 25th birthday, we have a young girl named Libby Jones who receives a letter that basically tells her she's been waiting for it her whole life. And it gives her sole inheritance to her family's home and her parents were killed or murdered or disappeared. And she finds out finally who they are. And she goes to the house and she's trying to determine who her family is and why the death occurred and all this stuff. But she is not the only person who has been waiting for this letter. There are other people that are have been waiting for her 25th birthday as well and are ready to take away what they want from her. Um, I read probably 25 pages of this in the store and I was 100%, 100%, Lock, stock, and barrel absorbed in this story. So I am actually super excited to read Lisa Jewell's Family Upstairs. Hopefully I found another new fun author that I can just dive into whenever I need it. So there you go. Okay. Last but not least, I'm on the last book, you guys. And let's just, again, cover love, cover love. And this is Correspondence by Tim Murphy. Now, Tim Murphy, a few years ago, wrote a book called Christadora. And if you guys have been a fan of my channel, you know that that was my favorite book the year it came out. I loved, loved that book. And I waited patiently, patiently for Tim Murphy to release another book. Um, I asked for an early copy of this. I was so excited I didn't get it. 
but as soon as it came out and I was able to get my hands on it, you know I did. So let me read it about you because this is a more complicated um, story theme. So the world is Rita Corey's oyster, the bright and driven daughter of a Boston area area Irish Lebanese family that has risen over the generations from poor immigrants to part of the coastal elite. Rita grows up in 1980s cultural mismatch. Corn, beef, and cabbage sit on the dinner table alongside stuffed grape leaves and tabbouleh, all cooked by Rita's mother, an Irish nurse who met her Lebanese surgeon husband while working at the hospital together. All of that food sounds delicious and I want it right now. The unconventional yet close-knit family bonds over summers at the beach, wedding line dances, and a shared obsession with the Red Sox. Rita charts herself an ambitious path through Harvard to one of the best newspapers in the country. She is posted in the cosmopolitan Be Beirut and dates a handsome Palestinian would-be activist. But when she is assigned to cover the American-led invasion of Baghdad in 2003, she finds herself unprepared for the war zone. Her lifeline is her interpreter and fixer, Nabil al-Jumali, an equally restless young man who dreams, whose dreams have been restricted by life in the deteriorating dictatorship, not to mention his own seemingly impossible desires. As the war tears Iraq apart, personal betrayal and the horrors of conflict force Rita and Nabil out of the country and into twisting, uncertain fates. What lies and wait will upend their lives forever, shattering their notions of what they are entitled to in a grossly unjust world. I hope that that sound is amazing to you as it sounds to me, because I think that sounds great. This pile of books is way too big for me to hold up here for you guys. So I hope that you guys were taking notes and that you were writing down or TBRing or good reading, good reads ing however you kept hold of your TBR, because I hope every single one of these books wound up, wound up on it. I am super excited about them all. As always, if you are a return subscriber, thank you so very, very much. I could not do this without you. If you are new to my channel, thank you. I hope you subscribe and I hope you come back for more. As always, I 100% always recommend to read globally, shop locally, and until next time, I wish you happy reading. Bye!